<laughs> so good morning, I'm Stas Schwarzman from Princeton. And I'm Lira Jacobi from Rutgers. So we're very pleased that our uh, paper in developmental cell was selected for paper picks. So the work was done in very close collaboration with Trudy Schubach, my colleague in molecular biology department here. The first authors were Nir Jacobi and Chris Bristow. When the paper was written, Nir was a postdoc in the lab, and now he has, he has his own lab at Rutgers, and he drove up this morning to join me for this video. So the work um, started as um, a goal to understand a very specific signaling event in drosophila development, but with time it evolved into a more general study of the geometric complexity of uh, gene expression patterns. The experimental system is uh, the development of the drosophila egg. One, the final product of egg development is of course the oocyte, it's ready to be fertilized. The oocyte is uh, surrounded by an eggshell, so it's a complex structure that has specialized features for entry of the sperm, hatching of the larva, respiration of the embryo. This structure is derived from an epithelial sheet that surrounds the developing oocyte during our genesis. So at about, so this epithelium is called the follicular epithelium. At about the midpoint of our genesis, follicle cells are extensively patterned. A large number of genes come up in different regions of space with different kinetics. And the initial objective of um, this project was to discover new genes and new patterns that are involved in this process. So NIR used um, a combination of genetic perturbations and transcriptional profiling approaches to identify uh, new patterns, and he was successful. So we were very excited every time we would see, we would uh, learn about a new gene involved in this process or about the new patterns that we haven't seen in the follicle cells. But at some point, we were simply overwhelmed by the complexity of the data, and we needed a way to keep track of the patterns that we have already seen, the patterns that were similar to the, to the ones that we have already seen. So the first step in this direction we decided to represent patterns using an alphabet of the shapes of a small number of building blocks that would recur multiple times um, in our data set. So these building blocks are shown here. They can look like a stripe in the anterior region of the follicular epithelium, like a dorsal patch, like an eyebrow-shaped pattern, lateral patches. And uh, so these are the simple building blocks, and we could use them to generate patterns that are more complex. So for example, the expression pattern of this gene can be represented using an intersection of the two elementary shapes that I introduced um, in the previous slides. So in this way, every gene expression pattern in our data set could be described using algebraic expression that contains the building blocks and the geometric operations, union, intersection, and addition. So this gave us a way to ask and answer a question about the spatial diversity of gene expression patterns in the system. So we learned by analyzing our data set using this framework that hundreds of gene expression patterns could be described using 36 distinct algebraic expressions based on three geometric operations that join and combine uh, six building blocks. So thus, gene expression patterns in the system appear to follow a relatively simple combinatorial code. We could go a little bit further and trace the origin of the building blocks and the geometric operations in this code. So for example, we, we know today that two of the building blocks are related to the spatial distribution of signaling pathways, the EGF signaling pathway and the BMP signaling pathway. So the dorsal patch and the anterior stripe building blocks in our code can be thought of as the level sets, lines of constant activation of these pathways um, in space. Geometric operations could be related to the local interactions of the cis-regulatory modules of target genes. So for example, if we have a gene that requires two signals for its activation, then it will be active only in this region, of, in the region of space where both signals are present. So in this way, you can generate an intersection operation in our code. And you can use similar logic to understand the origin of uh, union, difference, and uh, addition. So this time, we have only a handful of cis-regulatory sequences involved in patterning of the follicle cells, but we're working very actively in identifying many more. Okay, at the time when the paper was published, I moved into my own lab at uh, Rutgers University, and we were interested to study the evolution of uh, patterning. Uh, the eggshell is a wonderful system since um, all eggshells across the zoophila species, they, um, they are formed by uh, this layer of follicular epithelium that appears pretty similar across species and ends up with uh, diverse morphologies. Um, we were looking in, into one of, the, uh, one of the signaling pathways, the BMP signaling, and we found that it is uh, much different between different species with different morphologies. And furthermore, uh, we could relate these, uh, these differences to the uh, expression pattern of the receptor in this pathway. 
Now we're employing the code that was uh, developed uh, for Tosafilm and Gaster in order to study how you can diversify, how can you change the special distribution of the, uh, of the receptor across different species that will uh, give rise or will lead to, uh, to changes in the special distribution of the signal itself. So I would like to end up with uh, a reference to an experimental system that goes beyond drosophilogenesis and uh, show you a painting by Vasily Kandinsky from 1935. So in this painting, you can see at the bottom of the picture how Kandinsky was using very simple building blocks, dots, lines, and geometric operations of union, addition, intersection, in this case also deformation, plus some color, to generate two-dimensional patterns that look remarkably similar to gene expression patterns that we see when we study embryonic development.